Hello all and welcome to lesson 3.4 on histograms. Uh, you can follow along in the textbook on page 104. And the goal for this lesson is to use histograms to describe the uh, describe appropriate data. All right, so let's review what exactly a histogram is. Okay, and it is a graph with bars that show frequencies of data organized into intervals. Okay, interval here, 0 to 20, an interval. Okay, it says here that there are, okay, so if this is the time spent on homework in grade 8, all right, the frequency would be how many students, all right? So here it says that spending 0 to 20 minutes on homework, 4 students. So instead of taking 4 students saying, okay, this person, the student, this person had this much time, and there's another student that had that much time, and this time, and that much time. So all these 4 are students, okay? They'll say explanation points. But those are students. And instead of having all four of those in individual categories, individual bars, like a bar graph, they're going to be all grouped into here. Okay, and I'll explain more throughout the rest of this lesson. Now, the intervals line up side by side without gaps on the number line. All right, so this is your histogram that looks a lot different on the surface it looks you know looks like a, a bar graph but there's big differences and we'll go through them okay so first of all let's take a look at the problem here now if you're following along at home write this down all right so you're writing down here write down that and this is examples from your textbook okay so you don't need to take it from here but I grabbed this ex directly from the textbook okay so here's a problem Rishi's grade 8 class is planning a trip to Canada's Wonderland many of the attractions have a minimum or maximum height requirements. The height in centimeters of the students in Rishi's class are given below. So here's all the heights. Okay, so okay, there's 30 right here. Okay, he's got 30 kids in the class. Some students want to use a bar graph to display the heights. Other students want to group the heights to create a histogram. I mean, what else would you rather do when preparing for Wonderland than to make a graph? This is a group of high achieving kids, I have to say. I commend Rishi's class for this. Anyway, how can you use each type of graph to display the heights of the students in Rishi's class? So let's take a look. Now, here's your bar graph. All right, so here's the heights of the students in Rishi's class. This is not the whole class. By looking at the numbers on the previous slides, there are 30 students, okay? This is not all of them. And this is each kid. So here's each kid. Uh, Valeria is that high. These two kids are that high. This is the same. This is the same. That's also the same. That's what we call redundant. This is information you don't really need because what you're looking at is the heights, not the kid. We don't care that Anthony is 156 centimeters. We care how many are 156 centimeters. So this information is redundant. If we were to continue with this graph with 30 kids, we would keep going and going and going and going and they would take a, it would be taking up a lot of space. We don't need to do that because we need, we need to know how many are, are a specific height, not who is a specific height. And we can do that through a histogram. All right. So how many students are between 145 and 150 centimeters. Two of them are. Right here, here is the interval between 145 and 150. All right, so here is how many students. And notice how much cleaner this is. Straight to the point, smaller. You don't have to go halfway across the page. You've got this many, you know, this many bars with this many to represent all of these students. Now, if the data if the data value that falls, sorry, data values that fall at the value where two intervals intersect are usually placed in the higher interval. So, if a kid is 155, it will be placed here. All right? Be placed here in the higher of the two intervals. All right? So, Again, 155, we placed in the higher interval at 155. Okay, write that down. Write that. All right. So, we continue. Now, remember, we're going to review all this tomorrow or next day, okay, in case you're watching this on a Saturday. So, 
we will uh, review this next day. So let's look at the differences here. And again, this is for you to copy down. So histograms versus bar graphs found at mathisfun.com. Bar graphs are, you, are good when your data is in categories, such as comedy, drama, etc. Okay, um, in case you're watching movies. But when you have a continuous data, such as a person's height, then use a histogram. So you're taking, it's best to leave gaps between the bars so it doesn't look like a histogram. So here's your, here's your bar graph, okay? We're dealing with money here, okay? We don't know what the cat, we don't know what this is about, but this is a bar graph, and this is good when you're talking about categories, all right? When you're dealing with continuous information, like number ranges, it continues. So that's why you don't leave a gap, all right? And that's the difference between a bar graph and histogram. Again, write this down. Okay, so any questions we will address tomorrow. We don't have anything to come in prepared with except your notes, so take notes. Okay, and uh, I will see you next day. Thank you for watching.